Hello, citizens of tomorrow. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. I'm the executive producer and creator of tomorrow. I wanted to take a quick moment to talk about some of the changes we're going to be doing in the next few shows uh, and why we're making those changes. I did another one of these updates a week or two ago. Uh, it went over fairly well, and I think communicating with you why we're making the changes uh, helps a great deal. So first, let's start off with the Space News Show um, and what we're going to call it. Um, as, as I mentioned in the last show, spacenews.com has a trademark. I've been doing some research, and I'm not entirely sure what they have a trademark on. <laughs> Do they have a trademark, trademark on Space News or their logo? If you are a trademark lawyer, or if you can help in this regard and help us understand if we can call the show Space News legally with absolute certainty, uh, once we have someone say with absolute certainty from a legal perspective, yes, we can call it Space News, then that's what we'll do. We've listened to the comments. I understand you want to call it Space News. I do too. So as long as we can legally do that, that's what we'll do. Uh, so uh, a call out to the community. If you know a lawyer, if you are a lawyer, if you know how I can get to this information, um, I tried using the trademark website and it was, it was terrible. So if you can help out or know someone who can help out or, or put us on the right path, it would be greatly appreciated. Just leave a comment below or email me, benjamin at tmro.tv. Uh, other changes to the Space uh, News Show, um, uh, you, you saw that we brought in Space Mike this last week. Uh, he did the launch minute and he did a segment. This uh, Next week, we're going to bring Jared back in. Uh, where he's going to be doing a new story as well. The goal is to bring in a lot more hosts. So we'll, have, we'll be bouncing between hosts and each one of them will give their news story and, and kind of their take on whatever it is they're an expert on. And I think that's going to be a lot of fun. You have different perspectives, different personalities inside the show. I think it should be pretty cool. Um, we're going to slowly introduce that kind of host by host so I can work with each one one at a time to make sure that we have the right feel inside of the show because the scripted shows are a little bit harder, a little bit, nah, harder is not the right word. They're just, they're different than the live show. The feeling is different uh, and it takes a minute to get there. Uh, but give each of them a moment or two or a show or two to kind of get in the, in the right flow of things and I think it'll be really powerful when it works. Uh, the other thing I'm going to be changing is I might change it back. I'm, I'm a little undecided on this, but I think it's the right call. I'm going to change Launch Minute into Traffic. The reason I'm going to do this is twofold. Uh, one, it eliminates the need to put it into a 60-second box. Some launches, we only have 15 seconds worth of content for, and we need to find a way to stretch that 15 seconds into one minute. Other launches, we have 90 seconds worth of content for, and we have to find a way to compress that into one minute. That's silly. So we're still going to target one minute per launch. We want each launch to be around, on average, one minute. But if a launch needs to go a little bit longer to fit it in, we'll let it go a little bit longer. If we have a launch with almost no data, it's a NROL launch and we have no idea what they launched other than date and time and rocket, then you know we'll go for 30 seconds instead. I think that makes more sense in the scripted news format, and I think you're gonna get better data out of it that way. So that, that's reason number one. Reason number two is I'm also trying to spin up weather, and I think traffic and weather in a news show makes a ton of sense. Uh, I think it's fun to kind of have a space news show with traffic and weather as well. It's a, it's a, I don't wanna say it's a unique take, but it's a, it's a different take that I don't see other space entities doing. And um, it kind of brings it down here to Earth a little bit while still staying in the cosmos. Um, it's a little cheesy, but like, I think the good kind of cheesy. It's a very fine line. Hopefully I don't cross that line, um, but we're gonna try it. We're gonna see how it works. And speaking of weather, uh, we've, uh, I've been in contact with uh, um, Dr. Tamitha Skov um, with regards to doing space weather. She is known online as the space weather woman. Uh, you can find her on YouTube. She does just great, great space weather updates. And she's going to be taking these longer updates and turning them into two-minute segments for us. Uh, we actually have an example for you. Uh, if we were able to fit into the last week's show, it would have looked a little bit like this. Space weather this week has gotten very exciting. It all began with region 2733 that grew very rapidly in Earth view. It's been firing off a bunch of little flares, including a mid-C class flare, which is pretty surprising considering its solar minimum. However, this region did not fire any Earth-directed solar storms at us, and we've been watching it as it's slowly rotating now to the sun's backside. We will continue to watch it on the sun's backside, though, to see what more developments might 
might occur. Meanwhile, we've got this massive coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone here in the next day or two. The last time we did a dance with this coronal hole about a, a month ago, it brought us up to storm levels and it could do so again. We are definitely expecting aurora at high latitudes and we could even see a bit of aurora at mid latitudes for just a skosh. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And although there's not a lot of activity on the sun's backside, we do have a bright region, and it's been pretty active. In fact, on the 29th, it was firing off quite a few little solar flares. And this is good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. This region is going to be rotating into Earth view here in about the next day or two. We will actually can start seeing it right about now. And if it continues to keep up some of this activity, then it, we will easily have the solar flux stay up into the marginal range for radio propagation, and we will be able to enjoy the nice conditions we've already been having at Earth easily over the next week. Okay, so uh, I think that's going to be really great. The question is, what do you want to see in space weather? There are many different avenues we can take, like space weather can impact launches. So like if you have bad space weather, your rockets could be grounded. It can impact satellites. It can do bad things to things on orbit. Uh, it can create aurora. It can interfere with ham radio. So what would you like us to focus on from a space weather standpoint? And if I were to draw a line, line here, be like, do you want us to focus more on the space-based assets where it's how space weather is going to impact launches and satellites? Or do you want us to focus more on the Earth-based stuff and bringing space down to Earth how it's going to impact Aurora, how it's going to impact ham radio and emergency operations here on Earth, how it might impact you here on Earth. Which one would you prefer? Um, we're probably going to try a bunch of different things to see what actually fits and makes sense. So give us a little bit of time to play with that format. I think all of it's going to be cool, but like, you, you'll know it when you see it. You'll be like, oh yeah, that was awesome. When that happens, please let us know. That, that really helps us not just know what doesn't work, but what does work. That, that's really valuable data too. Um, so that's what's going on in the Space News Show. We also have our live show. Uh, I, I talked a couple weeks ago in this update about how the live show is supposed to be just a casual, fun conversation. We're going to talk on top of each other. And I, I, I don't think that properly conveyed the feeling of the show. This isn't a free-for-all, everyone's just talking on top of everyone else, uh, woefully drunk on set, uh, just rambling on for no good reason. That, that's not the point. And I realize our shows have gotten really long uh, and there has been a lot of rambling. And actually part of the point here, breaking out space news, is to stop that. So the, the shows have always targeted 42 minutes and we've been missing that. I want to get that back down to 30 to 42 minutes per show, per live show. That's how long these shows should be. I also think that they need to be true to themselves, meaning it's live. There needs to be a reason for live. And I think the best reason for that is interviews interesting interviews with people that you want to talk with. Peter Beck was a great example. Over at 12.02, if you had just extracted his interview segment and made that the entire show, that would have been an awesome show. It was a really great show. That feeling, that type of thing is what I think the live show should be. It's a way to interact with us kind of um, more so than a scripted format. So you get a little bit more of our personalities. We're laughing with guests. We're having fun. But really, I think we need to target those interview segments. And I, I think the roundtable should be the exception, not the rule. We'll have a few of them. We're going to have to. Guests will cancel. We won't be able to schedule a guest sometime. Uh, the end of the year is near impossible to schedule guests. But I think having an interview segment and having the live show just be an interview is the best bet. So we're going to try that for a little bit. We're not going to have segments anymore. No more space news in the live show. You have your own show for that now. The live show will be uh, 30 to 45 minutes or so. Uh, it will be a single interview, no breaks, front to back. You'll kind of see the cold open, the open, interview, close. That's what you're going to see. It's a place for you to kind of come, hang out, ask questions of interesting people that you hadn't talked to before. Um, and I, I think that's how these two shows should marry up. You're going to get a little bit of uh, crosstalk because it is more people talking. Uh, one other change, um, in Orbit 11, we had up to six people on set before. Uh, we kind of said, okay, no more, we, we put a limit on that, said no more than five, including the guest. I'm actually bringing that down another step. I'm saying no more than four, including the guest, using broad strokes. So 
If there is a time when we need to break that and bring on more people, we will. But I think we're going to try to average four people on set. I think that's going to be a better conversation where there isn't quite as much crosstalk, but it's still enough people to be interesting and dynamic and engaging. So you're going to see that change imminently. I might try bringing it backwards one more level down to three people, but I think three people, including the guest, is one to, isn't enough. Um, the, it might be because science is able to pull it off. I'm unsure, but we're going to try with four for a little while. So those are some of the changes inside of the live show. Uh, those are some of the changes inside of the Space News show. Uh, always look forward to your comments and feedback and what you think uh, we've been doing right or we've been doing wrong. Constructively, again, remember, debate the idea, not the person. Um, one last final note. Uh, <laughs> and she, she doesn't know I'm doing this, and she might be pissed at me for doing this, but I don't care. Um, I wanted to thank personally Lisa for doing a lot of the behind the scenes work for the show. It, uh, y y the community doesn't see most of what she works on, uh, which is sad because it's a lot of stuff. Scheduling guests, wrangling guests, doing pre-interviews to make sure that they're, they're okay to bring on the show, they're, they're point of bending metal and can speak about their product well. Um, making sure that uh, we have backup plans, coordinating media for all of these different things, making sure that all of that's in place. All of these are transparent and thankless jobs that without them, the show would not happen. And I just am, I am swamped between doing this and the day job at Company X, and I have not been able to put forth the time necessary to make these shows great. And so she has picked up that baton and run with it. She's never complained, she smiled the entire time, and has always said, is there anything else I can do to help? And she has never asked for anything in return. And I just wanted to publicly thank her for doing all of that, um, because you, the community, don't get to see that, and it's something that I think you should be allowed and able to see. So uh, thank you, Lisa, for making all of that happen. Now, that's not to say that our other hosts and other people don't do a lot of work as well. They do. This job is a small army of people who put these shows together. So thank you, everyone, and thank you to the community for supporting us and uh, sticking with us when we make sometimes bad decisions on what the show should be uh, and letting us know uh, what you really think <laughs> in, in the best uh, in a constructive way, uh, and then letting us know when it does work. Uh, that, that actually helps, like uh, just from a human level, saying good job, that helps us. Uh, we, we feel good about that when that happens. Uh, so there you go. That's my update. Uh, I'm probably not going to do too many more of these publicly. Uh, most of these I think I'm going to be doing, I'm going to continue to do these, but I think these belong in Patreon, uh, because they're the people paying for these shows to make sure we can do these week after week, do new things like the Space News show. Um, so uh, I'll continue to do this, but I'm going to move it over to the Patreon platform with the exception of drastically huge changes that I think everyone needs to know. Uh, thank you so much for watching the shows of tomorrow, and I look forward to speaking to you this weekend.